Bonjour, madame et monsieur. Comment vas tous ce grand jour? Ma journée a été géniale. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. How was your day? Mine has been great. Today we're going to talk about one of the most famous Malagasy poets who wrote his poems in French. John Joseph Rabbi Rivello, or if I try to pronounce it the way the French wants it to be pronounced, John Joseph Rabbi Rivello. I gotta do this as a joke, or as the Italians would have pronounced it. Jean Joseph Rabbi Rivello. John Joseph piqued my interest after I played the Hearts of Iron 4 game Red Flood, because in there he can be the accelerationist, which is the sort of poet ideology of Madagascar. And I sort of wondered why him? I mean, yeah, look at the photo. He looks a bit, you know, interesting. You know, it's, a, it's an odd photo. But is it because of the photo alone? It feels yes, but looking into him more, there is a lot to this guy. John Joseph's life can be sort of categorized into three. The romantic, the symbolic, and the surreal. But why was this the case? He was part of the first generation who was raised under the French colonial powers. Now, in a sense, he had no issue with this. Uh, his focus was on the French. There was a lot of other poets during the time which were more nationalistic, who tried to avoid the French and only write in sort of Malagasy poetry in a national sense. So don't take into any consideration of the French, be your own. But he didn't bother that too much because the French weren't that intrusive in his life per se. His entire life, in many ways, has been a struggle and he continues being struggled until the day he dies. But how do you deal with struggle? And sort of this is how John Joseph, for me, is quite interesting. How do you deal when everything you wish fails? Everything fails. So early on, your life could have been so much better if you were still nobility, broken off. All right, so then you go into the school system. What happens in the school system? Well, you're not really good. You lack discipline, you lack academic performances, you have a lot of issues, so you get moved around a lot, you can't do it, everybody thinks you're a bit of an iffy. You leave school and you do low-skilled work, you an errand boy, you never really succeed in that aspect there either, it's a struggle just to survive. It was also during this time he really start to write more because whatever he experienced he tried to write it in a way to survive with this early on this struggle early on with low skill work was to write but he didn't really write uh, as himself he wrote in synonyms he taught language himself he, he sort of did everything himself because that's the sort of life he had to live everything for yourself in 1920 john joseph was hired as an assistant librarian and it's here his life started to get somewhat better. He drafted his first book, which was a short novel written in the Malagasy language. And he was able to meet some high-level French bureaucrats at this time here. And these French bureaucrats gave him more opportunities. So he started to write more in French, and he was invited into a society of French elite. And in this society, he established himself as Madagascar's leader in poetry and Proust, and he was an esteemed journalist, an art critic, a translator, writer of essays and plays. And you think this is great, oh, he got what he wanted, he's in the top echelon of French Madagascar society. Eh, not really, this wasn't all too great, I should say. In 1926 he married, and they had five children. But he was a womanizer, he abused alcohol and opium, and he became dependent upon this. And when his daughter died, yeah, things start spiraling out of control. He starts struggling with debt. He was never really able to escape his poverty, and his mind started to just collapse around him. Being in the higher French society seems great. Things were not working out. It wasn't the romantic view that he once wrote, but during this time in, in, in this society, he wrote it uh, symbolically. It was about symbolism. So you start to correlate things instead. What you see, you correlate and you write what you see into something else. You symbolize the world around you. But when things start to get bad, you know, when his daughter died, but what surrealism can give to you is you can, with another form, describe the shit that you're going through. In his later years, that's exactly what he did with surrealism. 
And if I describe why it didn't go so well in the French high society, well, they're racist as all hell. And they use John Joseph as an explanation of, yeah, we can assimilate the barbarians into high French society. John Joseph trusted the French the idea that, yeah, you teach us French, which is not in and of itself not a bad thing to learn French. And we sort of work together. The barbarian was now civilized. And the people around him sort of said, ah, well, that, that's okay. You can get a role in the high bureaucratic society and sort of get a proper role and get out of poverty. If you just continue, you just continue. But he started to hate the French more and more. The relationship wasn't reciprocal at all between the two. And on the 22nd of June, 1937, 22nd of June, 1937, John Joseph committed suicide with cyanide because he was very ill and he even had tuberculosis. Things were not successful. There was no hope, no future anymore. There's no point being romantic. You delude yourself, you who don the air of the little bird, astray in a snowy forest that reached as far as the breast of Tagaro, of Whitman and James, who replaced the Christ hanging over your bed since it isn't the oldness of the world, nor that of days so many thousands of times, which crests now in the bread white and thick as oblivion, like hope and like the haze of torrid mornings, over there above the mountains, as astrologer consolating the stars and smoking a clay pipe. It is its youth, O oh my child, its internal youth, metamorphosis. Perhaps by grace of song of the poems you prefer, who created a religion for you, within the silence without end, peopled with columns and streams, with the living and the dead, is no more than the shadow of all things past, and he has nothing but the soul present. <laughs>